I've always had an interest in helping the homeless, like ever since I was in school. I was active with the St. Vincent de Paul, and that's, I suppose, where I got, to, got, I got the opportunity to know some homeless people on a personal level. So I suppose that kind of influenced my decision. The issue is kind of really prevalent in Dublin right now, and it's, it's at a peak where I think it, ha it hasn't been ever before. So I think now is a, a good time to do something like this. Like. Because I'm going in with something that's non-profitable, it's a bit of a curveball when it comes to equity and to returns and sort of stuff like that. But um, I don't think it should be an issue. I think this is the type of thing that if people want to get involved with it, that I don't think they'd be looking for like an equitable or a monetary return. And that's the kind of people we'd like to have on board with the whole thing, people that want to be involved for the sake of the whole thing. I know that Alison sits on the board of Ronald McDonald House, so with her experience at charity, I think she'd be a really good dragon to have on board with the whole project. Hello Dragons, my name is Marco Mara. I'm currently a fourth year student at the National College of Art and Design. I'm coming to you today with my business, Cara Ireland. I'm looking for 15,000 euro in return for a 25% stake in my company. How often do we see homeless people on the streets? How often do we want to help them, but we don't know the best way of doing so? How often do we want to give them cash, but we let our own prejudice stand in the way of it? From my own experience of working with the homeless, I've seen the barriers of mistrust that cash can generate. Cara is a system of notes, one, two, five, and 10 euro. The notes are to be bought by the public in small shops and news agents and to be uh, donated to homeless people. The notes are only redeemable in participating operators for food, shelter, and clothing. By focusing on the basic needs of homeless people and removing the barriers of trust that cash generates, we create a safe environment for the public to help the homeless. Nothing like this is in place in Ireland right now, but there is a similar concept in place in the United States, but I don't think it's been used to its full potential. 21-year-old Mark is seeking 15,000 euro for a 25% share of Cara Ireland, a not-for-profit company where any income will be reinvested in the business. What you've done is you're solving a problem, and please don't judge me because I'm one of those people. I would be walking past somebody, a homeless person, yeah. they might have a, a cup out for a few bob, and in my head, I think, well, if I give them the cash, it'll go on alcohol or something. So, sorry, don't judge me, but that's that. what I think. I and I believe a lot of people are, 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 are similar. I give them this card and, you know, they can go and uh, cash it for accommodation or food, uh, 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 sustenance, etc. That That to me sounds like a, a brilliant idea and uh, you're to be uh, commended for it, sir. Um, where are you at this stage then? Is this just a concept you've come in with uh, uh, because you haven't spoken to to uh, retailers, you're saying? Uh, no, I haven't entered into a full conversation with retailers. It is at the embryonic stage still. It is mostly a concept, and that's what I'd be looking to get some of you guys involved to help to get this off the ground. Mark, uh, this is a big problem, and I think the way you described it, uh, is good, you're trying to fix part of it, not all of it. And I think everyone, if everyone tries to do that, we'll have a good shot of making progress. I know in the US, uh, I, I live in California, there is a kind of a food coupon program yeah. for people who, who need help. One of the problems with that is that there's, you know, for the people that are involved, there's a bit of a stigma going into a shop with one of these food vouchers. There was no intention with any of this to ever be patronising or in any way, anything like that, to homeless people. But um, I think it is something that, like, from speaking to homeless people, I think it is something that they'd like to see brought about. Because you see, like, uh, even in town, when you see homeless people with boards saying, uh, like, genuinely homeless, need money for, for shelter, for food. Like, I did surveys into this, and what I, I asked people, would they give money to the homeless? Would they give money to a homeless addict? And then, uh, so I think it was 67% said they would give money to the homeless. 63% said no, they wouldn't give money to a homeless addict. But when I asked them in a hypothetical situation where the money they gave to a homeless person would only be spent on food, shelter or clothing, would it make it more likely to give? And there was an 89% yes answer to that. If you're an example of how young people think today, we're all in safer hands. <laughs> Thanks very much. Um, I just want to say from a practical point of view, I was involved in a business um, you're too young to remember, but the beginning of the mobile phone uh, industry, we had actual cards that you scratched off a number at the back yeah. and you, do you remember that? No? No. No, I, I knew you wouldn't. I'd be telling And you keyed yeah. in your codes. Uh, where I'm going with this is the danger with a paper-based voucher is fraud. I know. 
So I if do. this became hugely successful, the next thing that would happen is you'd have copycats, and before you know it, the whole project would fall apart. Mm. So that is something, I know that from experience, so that's yeah. something you need to think about. I have been speaking to a printing company based in Dublin that do a lot of work with scratch cards and sort of stuff like that. Okay. And we have been talking about moving the prototype that it would have a scratch coating on the front, so that we'd have two barcodes, and uh, one would be where the, when the card is sold, and then when the scratch coating is peeled off, that's when the card is redeemed. So that's one of the methods that we are looking towards okay, to so uh, negate and count of it. Okay. I think what you're doing is really, I suppose, is what's commonly called social entrepreneurship. You're, you're yeah. trying to solve a, a social problem. But it seems to me there's a lot of organizations working with the homeless um, yeah. that it would be worthwhile engaging with them mm. uh, and maybe just widening the net rather than just going it alone because there might be a, a few yeah. tweaks and things um, uh, that, 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 that might be the difference between making it work or not. Yeah. Mark, I've done, done some work with, with a number of NGOs and I think the whole idea of metrics around donations, so, so people really, when they, when they give money, sometimes they're concerned that it's all just going into to one big pot and, and they're not yeah. really clear about what's going to happen to it and is it going to get swallowed up in administration and all of that. So this is a very direct route to, yeah, exactly. to, to give uh, assistance to a beneficiary very directly. Yeah. Uh, I think it could probably be tweaked in a way that, that maybe would plug you into one of the existing uh, network yeah. of organizations because what we don't need is another proliferation of yeah, um, administration systems around yeah. things. It, it, it can waste a lot of money. Are you planning to make a living out of this somehow? Uh, I mean, after you graduate, you're full time on this now. How, how does that work? That, that's kind of a tricky part of it, isn't it? It is. Um, I had no part when I was coming up with this concept that I ever envisioned myself making any money off this. I want this to be totally done where you buy for face value and it's redeemed for face value. I didn't want any of this to become a sort of a cash cow of any How of are any you going to pay your rent? I know, that's the thing. Um, I think that this would... Look, like, Mark, uh, uh, I'm going to help you pay your rent. Uh, I'm very impressed. Uh, <laughs> so look, I'm going to make an offer for the 15,000. It's not a business <laughs> offer. Yeah. I, I'm also making the offer conscious of it's, it's uh, 15,000, uh, but actually it'll be the time that has to be put in yeah. here because we have to open a few doors. And I'm very mindful... Yeah of what my colleagues have said. You know, we don't need another charity. We need to work with uh, all of, of the uh, great people who are who are working in this sector. So mm. I'm offering you um, fifth, the full amount, 15,000 euro. We, we'll see what we can do to, as Alison has said, address what is a very uh, serious problem in our society at the moment. Well, Mark, it's not, for me, it's not a commercial, um, yeah. it's not a commercial operation, however, I would be more than happy to talk to you um, uh, wearing, wearing a, diff a different hat <laughs> outside the den and uh, I really wouldn't be looking for percentages of, of, of anything. Thank you very much. I think if you can plug into some of the organisations like the Simon community and what they're doing and yeah. I have some connections there, I can certainly make some introductions. Um, I'm very happy to do that. Uh, and uh, putting a, a sort of a business uh, angle on some of this, I can yeah. help you with, with, with that too. So uh, very happy to, to chip that in. Thank you very much. I'm just going to give you a 5,000 contribution towards what you're doing. Brilliant. That's amazing. Thank you very much. I, I'm going to have to better Gavin's offer, I think. Um, <laughs> I'll give you 20,000 for 25% of the business. <laughs> so, Gavin, over to you. The Five Dragons all recognise the importance of Cara Ireland. But will Gavin outbid Barry? Or... Has he another idea? So Barry, as I understand it, I, I've offered 15,000. You're offering uh, 20. Uh, let's make it 25 and do 12 and a half each for the 25%. Is that okay, Barry? I'm yeah, in. That, that, that's the offer we're making. Brilliant. 25,000 euro, uh, yeah. 10,000 more than you sought, for 25% jointly from my uh, self and Barry. And we have 5,000 so from... So that's 30,000. So that's... Uh, this is the first time in the den that somebody came in and asked for money and got more yeah. and then gave away the same amount of percentage. I'm honestly humbled, flattered. This is honestly brilliant. I'd love to accept your offer. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much. Well, I really appreciate it. Cheers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Gavin, well pleasure. Done. Well Thank done. you very much. He's wonderful. Hey, he must have very proud parents at home. I think there'll be a lot of organizations and people watching that can help with this project in some way. Yeah.
Mm. Uh, and I think that'll be the trick, is rallying a community around it. Were you nervous before you went in? You'd be lying to say if I wasn't nervous, but I stuck at it and powered through, and thankfully it came out the right way. You've ended up with, I think, all five dragons offering support in different forms, as well as uh, €30,000 to make this idea happen. Yeah, honestly, it was brilliant. Like, for them all to get involved as well, like, was a dream come true, to be honest. Like, to get all their experience on board onto the one project, as well as the capital investment. Can't describe how good I feel right now. Well, the very best of luck with it. Well done, Mark. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And so the final entrepreneur has left the den. The Dragons have invested €930,000 in 15 very different businesses. This year's entrepreneurs have proven that startup businesses have played a vital part in Ireland's economic recovery. The entrepreneurial spirit is alive and well. Thank you for watching, and I leave the last word to the Dragons. Well, I've been out of the country for a few years. Uh, I remember coming back for the Global Irish Economic Forum in 2009, and just the air of depression over the country was palpable. But it's, it's like night and day now, and we're seeing it in this series, and it makes me want to come home. Oh, Barry, we'd oh, love Barry. to have you <laughs> back. <laughs>already have been offered 50,000 euro. I think it's been inspiring to see uh, such, a, such a good gender balance. We've had 50-50, really, in, mm. in terms of the promoters. I'm Liz Fingleton, and this is Kate Cronin. This is my business partner, Deirdre Fitzpatrick. Great uh, sense of drive and ambition, wasn't there? Um, you know, people wanted to go global. The US and Ireland and the UK, all getting up and running straight away. There's lots of potential. I, I'm not just potential, I'll deliver hadn't experienced so many turndowns where, you know, I thought I'd made a generous offer. I can't do 30, unfortunately. They walked away. They, they must have other funding lined up. Not only am I out, but I think you should be out too. I think you should turn around, walk out the door, and continue what you're doing. You don't need the help from one of these guys. And they ended up with twice the amount of money that they came in looking for. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that also shows a very sharp negotiating strategy. Yes! <laughs> Sometimes you kind of feel the investment is a bit of a gamble. But I'm really happy with the investments I got this year because the quality was so high. I think we all got something that we were happy with. Uh, we had those battles. There's no way I'd go into this one with you, Gavin. And it's uh, pistols at dawn. If you're ma making sausages, I'd work with Eamon, but this is tech, so... <laughs> Everybody managed to walk away with, with something that will, will really succeed. We're going to have fun Thank with this. Thank you so much. Wait Thank you. Well, I remember growing up, if you mentioned that you wanted to uh, go into business for yourself, you were seen as a, a bit of a lunatic, or could you not get a job in the bank? So I would definitely think that uh, this series has proved that from an Irish context, being a self-starter is now considered quite respectable. So I hope that's what's going to change the fate of this country. That just shows Ireland is back.